chain but in the closing months of his 2008 campaign, a financial meltdown redefined the challenges for the new president. In this excerpt, Chris Matthews looks at what Obama inherited when he took the oath of office. Problems waiting for him on the Oval Office desk included two wars, a broken health care system, an economy on the verge of collapse, millions facing foreclosure, a jobless rate spiking relentlessly skyward. Tomorrow, we're expecting another dismal jobs report on top of the 2.6 million jobs that we lost last year. We've lost half a million jobs each month for the last two months. But while all agreed on its ferocity, the crisis failed to unite a polarized country. Despite a highly vocal opposition, the president managed to push through the biggest economic stimulus in history. Here you go. It's not- the stimulus and the $80 billion auto rescue that followed burned through much of the political capital Obama had hoped to cash for health care reform, a key promise he'd made to the American people. Madam Speaker, the President of the United States. But with the economy still on shaky ground, Obama decided this was an issue he needed to take on early in his presidency or forfeit it entirely. The time for bickering is over. The time for games has passed. Now is the season for action. Now is when we must bring the best ideas of both parties together and show the American people that we can still do what we were sent here to do. Now is the time to deliver on health care. My colleague and host of Hardball, Chris Matthews, joins me now. Well, I I am uh, befuddled by the inability of the Obama team to state the obvious. When he came in in 2009, he didn't come in in 2008, no matter what uh, Paul Ryan thinks. That plant closed in 2008 in in, in Janesville. He came in in 2009 where unemployment was spiking up to well past 2 percent. The stock market was bottomless, falling down to 6,500, the lowest in more than a decade. He took it from 6,500 to 13,000, from over 10 down to 8. How can you not say we're better off? I don't see what's so complicated about this. to the unemployment numbers and the fact that people don't feel. So it's it's a matter, it's a balancing act. The isn't directions it for them? are better. The fact is that uh, we were in a very scared country in 2009. When W left, we didn't know how deep it was going to go. Nobody knew it was going to stop at 6,500 with the stock market. It was heading downward. Unless he had gotten through that stimulus package in February of 2009, we don't know where we would be. And for them to criticize the Democrats after leaving this country in hell, and then to come back and claim it isn't heaven is insane. And, the, and, and I, I think I don't understand it because it's not, it wasn't a marginal improvement. It was taking us back from the abyss. If you're not going to fall off a cliff and you're 10 feet back from the cliff, that's a hell of a lot better than being off the cliff. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's not about being how far you're going to fall. It's whether you go off the cliff or not. And I think that's something these people, it's not my job. And they got to do it. And they got to start with Martin O'Malley. I, these guys, are they? they're professional politicians, and they don't know the easiest political questions. How are they going to know the answers? Let these are easy. The, let me ask you about the speakers of this convention. You've got you know, a new rising star in the party as the keynoter. How are the speakers going to match up? They have a lot more House members. Members of Congress, we know that Congress well, look, is the advantage historically is the unpopular. Have, is they have a president and a vice president who are clearly human beings. That's an advantage. The other guys had to reach that test in, in, in Tampa. They had to prove they were human. That, that was their first standard. That's pretty good. Imagine having to prove it. So, Obama, so Ryan comes out and tells a joke about his iPad or his iMusic or whatever it is to show that he's cool. He's alive. We know that Biden's a person. He makes mistakes. He commits gaps. But he's a recognizable human being. 
Barack Obama is definitely a recognizable human being. It's an amazing standard that we set. That, we, that, that is the first goal in life, is to prove you're one of our species. Mitt Romney. It's an amazing thing. Mitt Romney fills in the biography. With all due respect, Mitt Romney did a very good job in that convention of showing the human side of Mitt Romney. Now, he's been criticized by the Wall Street Journal editorial page this past weekend for not filling in the details of how he would create new jobs, how he would become energy independent. But he did show the soul and the heart and the man. And I think you praised you know, aspects of that speech. You praised some of the speech of speakers as well. I think he was better than he was the week before when he was telling birther jokes. I think he was better than that. He stopped telling birther jokes. He got better. Ha! But look, I think there's some, I think the Republican Party is confined the Democratic Party on so many levels. First of all, they try to deny people the right to vote. That's the first thing they do. That's the first goal. Is that to have a photo ID card, a birth control certi- birth certificate? What else are they going to pile on? A literacy test? Okay, they keep adding that stuff up. Then they, then they try to scare people to go to even bother to vote because it's too complicated. And then they start the white working class agitation with the welfare stuff. They do that very effectively. They discourage black voting and encourage white anger. It's, and they're doing that in the back room while they set out this guy looking pretty face on television. But they're the ones approving this ad campaign. And they're approving the voter voter suppression stuff. And in Pennsylvania, where you and I live, they had the head of the Republican Party in Harrisburg bragging about holding back voters from voting, and that means they can win the state by preventing black people from voting. That's the goal. You know this is going on if you're laughing, because you know it's all true. You don't have to say it. I am. It's, it's, it's not our opinions. It's not opinions. It's factual. It sadly is. <laughs> And the special documentary, Barack Obama, Making History, airs tonight at 10 Eastern.